My name is Mark Redgard. I'm born in Jamaica, but I grew up in the States, grew up between New Jersey and New York, and um, did undergraduate in New Jersey, and I got my law degree and MBA. Started to practice entertainment law, did entertainment management with a few notable clients, and um, ended up making my way to South Africa with a few clients for a Nelson Mandela event, and subsequently spent a lot of time in Africa sort of developing music and developing um, marketing issues. Let's talk about Spinlet. When I came into the market, the idea with Spinlet was instead of there being brick and mortar stores throughout Nigeria that sold music, why don't we create something that was disruptive? Come in with digital. Digital now allows you to not have to put up a store, not have to deal with inventory, stock, or employees. It now puts you in a position where anywhere in the world, if you've got a phone and you've got broadband connectivity, you could now access music. So that was a concept. 160 million people in Nigeria, over a billion people in Africa, almost nowhere throughout the continent do you have these real brick and mortar stores. So if we take advantage and leapfrog over that, we'll have a competitive advantage. So when we came in, we looked at Android, BlackBerry, and Symbian as being the operating systems that we were going to focus on. So we focused on those, we ramped up, and we were ready for launch. And just before we were about to launch, we then realized that almost all of the time and effort we put into BlackBerry, it was almost like an exercise in futility because even though we were ready to go with the most advanced operating system, what we didn't realize was that almost everyone in Nigeria who got a BlackBerry never upgraded their operating system. And unbeknownst to us, we had no idea that no one upgraded their operating system. So the developers didn't think that, I didn't think that, so there was this big gap. So when it came time to launch, and we knew that BlackBerry was one of the more important markets, we then realized if we launch now, we'll probably have 5% of the market share. So we had to go back and then look at about four or five legacy operating systems, which took another six months or so to go back into development and then make sure that they were um, in line with the app. Um, so I think that was probably one of the biggest challenges, one of the bigger setbacks, probably one of the more um, costly adjustments that we had to make. And a lot of that has to do with sometimes not really understanding as much as you can about the local environment because our developers were in Finland and we thought all of that communication was taking place but because they weren't on ground and because they hadn't queried to ask what are you using, what is the operating system, it was just a general assumption. Almost everywhere throughout the world everyone upgrades their operating system but here you've got a challenge of broadband so why spend your data upgrading, upgrading an operating system if the one you have is already working. So it made logical sense, but we just hadn't thought about that at the time. Well, record labels that we currently have, Aristocrat Records, which is a record, the record label that Burner Boy was attached to, his contract expired and he decided not to work with Aristocrat anymore. So we still have Picado, Kamar, Ozone, Mojid signed to that label. But the idea there was that you would almost look at um, Burner Boy as a crown jewel. You know, you had an artist that was on the up. You knew he was very young, 1920, still had a lot of years ahead of him. Was starting to build up a strong organic following. And we thought with that sort of setup that he had quite a few more years to go and it was just up for him. So that was one of the ideas, that you could take a young label like Aristocrat or Burner Boy and the other younger artists and create a movement, like an organic movement where they could come up with a sound and based on how successful Burner was, we knew that we could kind of push that sound throughout Nigeria. On the other side, you have Hypertech Digital, which is Two Faces label, 
Under that label, you have Dammy Crane, you've got Rocksteady, and a recent signing was Sir Victor Wifo. Um, so with that, as with Two-Face leading the way, you knew he was in a position to open the doors for all of the artists that were under him, whether he would put them on the record for a collaboration or he would have them open a show for him. He was in a position to, yeah, to, to leverage them to give them a bigger, um, a bigger appearance and more top of mind awareness within the industry. So those are two of the labels that we have signed and the reasons why. Number one, they were making money through shows or making money through endorsements. Okay.